uh, people all over the triangle and all over the country that have heard about this one rock star for the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation. He was the face and the voice for everything that we stand for now and his mom and dad are here now, uh, the Weiss family. Uh, if you remember Nicholas Weiss, um, when you just heard that name you had a smile on your face because he made everybody smile. And uh, Nick has uh, passed away and uh, the family is still here uh, strongly. They, uh, we talked to them last year. Uh, it is something that their, their family so passionate about that they come here every year and go all over. The, they, I was just asking the parents, I said, hey, look, man, are you guys still busy? And they're like, oh, my God, we spend half of our time going to different charities and uh, just trying to get the word out that, look, this, there's no reason for kids to have to go through what Nicholas went through. All right, big man. How you doing? You're first. <laughs> you me? Yeah, <laughs> we'll save the best for last with mom. That's, that's right. Yeah. So, um... Like for me, what? for instance, I haven't been here but a few months, yeah. and I've heard all about Nicholas. So I know that I wanted to know, I wanted to hear y'all's story because I've heard about how amazing. Tell he about, is. tell it, tell her about your. Was it your? My aunt. aunt? Like I'm living out of state, <laughs> and I get a call from my aunt saying that they're doing the, the motorcycle ride for Nicholas. You know, and so I've heard about him. I was in New York or in Detroit, and I heard about Nicholas. That's that's All the way across, you know, halfway across the country. All right, so start from the beginning and tell Eric everything about it. Well, I don't even know where to begin on that one. I mean, he was diagnosed when he was two and a half. Um, had a, an amazing battle for such a young child. I mean, never questioned it, just went on and dealt with it. And I think his way of dealing with it was making others laugh. So we, you know, not just, he would call in here a lot and tell his jokes. We had other radio shows we called and tell jokes on. It doesn't matter if we're in picky with Duke. We're walking down the hallway. He starts talking, and the lady nurse is like, I know that voice. Who is that? And he goes, yeah, that's me. That's me. I'm that kid. <laughs> and next thing you know, we have five, six five or six nurses in our picky room, and he's putting on a 30-minute set. So he was all about not Nicholas. He was all about everyone else. Yeah. And that's what was the most awesome thing about him. He didn't care about what's going on with me. It, it was funny because... We have another good friend, and he would say, hey, Nichols, how are you doing? And Nichols would go, no, how are you doing? So you know, it's not important. He never paid attention to all the struggles that he nope. was going through his battle. Nope. He always wanted to make sure that everybody else was okay first, right. which was amazing. He was just, I, I don't know, he's just, he was just a, a, a kid that would put himself, his money, his, like when we come here even, he would say, okay, I'm bringing in all the money in my wallet. So let's say I have $120, you guys going to match it. And we say, sure, if you're going to give your money, we're going to give our money. And I remember the first year, the whole $30 donation thing, yeah. <laughs> up in the stands, and he's like, if I, he goes, if, I, if a kid can get $30, he goes, you can get $30. And next thing you know, we have a mall full of people mm -hmm. giving $30. He's giving out kisses, writing his autograph. <laughs> autograph. Wrote one to <laughs> um, the daughter-in-law of the president of the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation said, you're so cute, I could slap my mama. <laughs> so it was just, he just had this life about him and still does, believe it or not. Even though he's not here with us, there's not a day that we don't go out to the cemetery or we go to the store or anywhere we go. If I'm wearing, you know, a Miles of Smile shirt for Nicholas or, what, or anything with his name on it, people go, I know that kid. Yeah. And it's always amazing all the people he's touched, not just here locally, but just across the world. There's a, there's a very funny Nicholas story about the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation. Anybody that met Nicholas knows everything you would ever want to know about the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation, and you would not leave with any change or, or money in your pocket. Yeah. It was up to him. So our good friend Jerry Hart owns this restaurant, and he was would have a jar to collect money. Well, somebody broke in and stole that jar. Well, let me tell you, Nicholas had just gotten out of the hospital after his, like, fourth or fifth craniotomy. And it was ironic that um, the trainers, the founders of the, of the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation, just so happened to be at Duke that week for their visit to make sure that the funds were being spent correctly. And, you know, just, just going and laying hands on, on the operations. Yeah. And um, 
So they stop by our house on, after they finish that visit. So Nicholas, who, you know, he's all bandaged up, but he is mad because he knows that, that Jerry collects money for the kids. We don't think Nicholas understood that he was a kid. <laughs> um, but so Jerry's collecting this money for the kids, and darn it, somebody stole it. Wow. So he's going on telling Mike Trainer. He pulls out his wallet. He said, this is what I've got. I mean, it, we, I think he needed like 300 and some odd dollars. Yeah. So he pulled his wallet, pulled a piggy bank, and said, we have to replenish this money. It is for the kids. So he looks at Mike Trainer and says, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> so, Here's my money. What do you got? <laughs> so Mike opens up his wallet, hands Nicholas every single penny he has. And we're chuckling because, you know, this is for the kids. It's for the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation. And this is the founder of it. You know, yeah. who opened his wallet and gave it to Nicholas, and he's like, "The kids will appreciate it. Thank you." <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that was one of those. Nicholas had this way, yeah. and he was he was so passionate about this. They had made him a, a formal ambassador for the foundation. So we traveled around. We spoke about it a lot. He was extremely matter of fact about having a brain tumor. Um, you know, if you would see him, he'd have this scar, which he did like to show off because he thought the girls got, thought scars were cool. <laughs> um, you know, he would say, it's all okay, I had this brain tumor thing, I've had some surgeries, I have this steel plate in my head, just don't touch it and everything's good. <laughs> and, um, and so he just had this way, he, he you know, he, he gave... He had swaggers. He sure oh, did, yeah. he used it, he little, used it. Little pediatric oh, yeah. swagger. Oh, yeah. But he, he, he was... He was so passionate about it that um, he would use every opportunity to, to shake everybody and anybody down for all of these little banks around our house. Some of it would go to Ride for Kids, some of it would go to Radiothon, you know, some of it was for if there was a family in need. He was, he was crazy passionate about, um, you know, helping others, yeah. but never about himself. And that, that was one of the things um, about Nicholas that he just... It was always about everybody else, worried about everybody else, and um, how did you guys tell him when you found out that he had cancer? Well, he was. This is the most interesting piece of it, and people may not agree with our approach. Mm -hmm. We're very non-conventional in everything we've ever done. Um, he was two and a half, so he was too young to understand. Right. But from two and a half till almost ten, it was a huge part of our lives. So he was very educated about brain tumors, as as his age allowed. You know, he would learn whatever was age appropriate at the time. But we started to see his reaction to the word cancer when he knew what cancer meant, and we firmly believe that so much about a, a battle with cancer is not just mental but physical. Um, you know, so it's a it's the mental battle that if you know that you have something to be afraid of, that's going to take all your energy. And yeah, he never feared it. No. So our approach was we didn't necessarily need to talk about cancer. It wasn't withholding. He knew that some people had cancer, but he didn't necessarily equate the fact that the one that the t tumor type that he had was cancer. So it, it he just didn't have that same fear, and he was, we were very much a get in, get out, get on with it. Well, I can remember we had a conversation with one person, it was all about cancer and how they had cancer, and that person walked away and looked at us, and he goes, man, I'm glad I don't have that. <laughs> and yeah. we're like, you know, you keep on believing that, because if that's what's going to keep you moving on and just yeah. keeping on doing your thing, yeah. you go right ahead, brother. It's irrelevant, yeah. you know? It, it, if it wasn't, it wasn't, that information wasn't going to help him. No. Now, other people that that doesn't work for them sure. based upon the age of their yeah. children. Yeah. But for Nicholas, it worked. And it wasn't until the very, very yeah. end, that last six months, and that and it was when he realized he had cancer. And at that point, um, that's when we, you know, saw a very quick decline. Yeah. You definitely, you feel his presence. But, but one thing Nicholas did, and I think he did this very intentionally, he planted all these seeds in all of these mm -hmm. people. And now people associate the song Smile with Nicholas. They associate everything that has to do with a smiley face with him. Yeah. You don't realize how much you see a smiley face until you're in this situation. There, there are so many things that happen that, that we, we know it is it's a gift from him and so he planted these seeds and all these people are doing he doesn't have a voice he's not here but there are people that are doing things that are so nicholas like um you know we see it every day kids kids picking up where where nicholas left off he left us some pretty big shoes to fill and i do have to say we have to ask for everybody's help because one promise we made to nicholas at the very end was his battle was hard but a brain tumor took him, and now it's war. 
So we promised Nicholas that we would not give up fighting brain tumors. A brain tumor is not going to take our only child and take these other kids and have us sit back and say that's okay. Because the time we started our battle at two and a half to the time our battle ended at almost ten, the amount of procedures available, the amount of medications available oh, yeah. changed dramatically. And it changed a hundred percent because of the research and the money, the donations, but the research that's specific to the kids and the people that fund that is the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation. So we made a promise to Nicholas that we, uh, uh, it, it's war now. This is no longer just a, um, we're gonna fight a battle. This is war. We, we cannot let brain tumors win. Nope. We cannot let brain tumors continue to take kids and continue to destroy families. If you can help out one more time, the phone number is 1-866-975-CURE, C-U-R-E.